I'm Jennifer Hinks. I work for LGC, where I'm a principal scientist currently setting up a flow cytometry service. So when I finished my biochemistry degree, I moved to a couple of small biotechs in Oxford. And from there, I went to Pfizer, where I worked for six years in the biomarker discovery group. Uh, when they shut the site, I went with it and I moved up to Envigo where I started out as a technical specialist in flow cytometry and then uh, eventually moved up to take on the team as the section head um, doing all the flow cytometry analysis. And I have very recently moved to LGC where I am setting up a flow cytometry service. So in one of the biotechs in Oxford there was a grey box in a corner and I knew if I put my cells on it and some dots appeared and they shifted in the right way I had got the result that I wanted and on the strength of that I then went to Pfizer and worked exclusively in flow cytometry for the next six years and that's where I really developed my interest and my understanding of the technique. So I am setting up a flow cytometry service at LGC. Uh, I have spent the last um, several months investigating potential flow cytometers for the department there and we are just about to place an order for a beckman coulter Cytoflex. So flow cytometry is quite a complex um, system which uses lasers and optics to measure the properties of cells. So the cells are labelled up with markers which are often antibodies that have been fluorescently labelled and they're markers to various um, kind of cell surface markers or intracellular markers on cells and you use your knowledge of the biology of the cells to define which markers will pull out various different cell populations or perhaps activation markers markers um, and it uses the fluorescence from the lasers and then the detectors to pick up those markers. Flow cytometry is a very powerful tool to examine immunological systems and it can give you a lot of information about the method of action of drugs and kind of the toxicological effects specifically on individual cells and individual cell populations. However, it is a very complex technology to use. It requires quite a lot of technical input um, and, and it has its challenges when it comes to validating the assays because there's no regulatory guidance um, for validating flow cytometry assays. So there are no regulations um, in the flow cytometry field and we very loosely base our um, assay validations on the Lear Al Fit for Purpose Biomarker validation paper and there's also a white paper out there by O'Hara. Um, it was written seven years ago and I think as we learn more about the validation of flow cytometry assays I think it would benefit from some um, investigation as to whether or not these really are suitable criteria to apply to flow cytometry validations. I always say flow cytometry is art and science combined so a lot of science is very much um, you do a test and you get a number with flow cytometry because of the nature of the interpretation both biological and then looking at the data itself um, you have to use kind of a level of biological knowledge and sometimes a little bit of intuition um, to understand the results that you're generating and, and that's absolutely my favourite aspect. So obviously I'm embarking on a new journey of setting up a, a new facility from scratch. So I joined an existing facility previously, so this is a big challenge for me. I'm looking forward to being able to establish relationships with new partners um, to, and start to build our flow cytometry facility into a successful venture.